So this is this is just an example here where we're going to evaluate an integral, but we're going to change the variables from x's to y's. Um, can you guys read this okay here? It's y equals the opposite of the square root of x plus 2. Um, so we want to find the area of the enclosed region here. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be this area right here. And I want to talk first about why we would integrate with respect to y instead of x. Um, the main reason why we would do that is we would have to partition this right here if we wanted to find this area with respect to x. Uh, and the reason is we have the red function on top and the green function on the bottom um, to the left of this point. And we have the red function on top and the blue function on the bottom to the right of this point. Um, so I think you guys can see that if we, sorry, um, if we were to change variables, if we were going to go perpendicular to the y-axis, um, we're going to get one interval, integral, sorry. Um, now, why am I saying we're going to get one integral? Because, well, I'll make an argument why not, and you guys can tell me why this argument's wrong. Uh, it looks to me like the blue function's on top here and the red function's on the bottom here, and the blue function's on top here, but the green function's on the bottom here. So uh, it looks like I'm going to have to split it up and go from, well, whatever this is, maybe negative 1. I'm not sure what this point is here, but uh, maybe negative 1 to 0 and then 0 to 1 point, whatever this is. Um, why do I not have to split it up here at 0? If you solve this for x and you solve this for x, um, for this one you're going to get x equals y squared minus 2 um, when y is greater than 0. And for this one you're going to get x equals y squared minus 2 when y is less than 0. So why not just put those two together? And if we solve both of those we get, sorry, x equals y squared minus 2. That's a 1. So both of these functions, the red function and the green function, um, if, if we look at it with respect to y, we can write it as a single function. So really our bottom function here is the same thing all the way from our upper limit, whatever this is going to be here, to our lower limit, whatever that is there. Okay. Um, how about this one? Let's go ahead and solve this real quick. So this is going to be our lower one. What's our upper one going to be if we write this in terms of y? I'm going to call this xl for lower. Um, so our x upper is going to be what? The cube root of y or... I like to use the fraction exponents here because integrating with those is going to be easier. Um, so we get y to the one-third. So the upper function is going to be y to the one-third. The lower function is going to be y squared minus 2. So to find this area, it's going to be a fairly simple integral. Um, this area is going to be the integral of the bigger function minus the smaller function. So y to the one-third minus the quantity y squared minus 2. with respect to y. Right? You guys agree with that? Okay. Yeah. We do have a problem though, or we at least need to do something else. What else do we need here in this integral? For this integral? Yeah, so we need to we need to find these limits and to find the limits we need to find the intersection here and here and we're looking for the y values in those intersections. So you need to be able to do this on the calculator. Um, so what I would do here is just set these equal to each other, say x cubed equals the opposite of square root of x plus 2, um, and solve for x, or actually even better yet, set these two equal to each other. This is going to be even better because we want the y values here, right? So set these two equal to each other and solve. I want you to do that in your calculator. And then I want you to stop for a second because we're going to get some big long decimals. What, what do we get for a y value here? 
negative 1. That one's simple enough, right? So I'm going to put negative 1 here as my lower limit. The upper limit, on the other hand, that's going to be a big decimal, right? What, what are we getting for that? About what? 1.7 something something something, right? How? No. 1.2? 1.7. Yeah, 1.7 something. How many decimals of accuracy do we need when we're doing this here? As many as possible. That's a great answer, Haley. Three is not enough. Remember, we want answers accurate to three decimal places. If we're using intermediate answers that have accuracy to three decimal places, we may not have enough accuracy in the end. So we don't want just three decimal places. Five might be enough, but we're not really sure if five's enough. Um, I did say that if you're using intermediate answers, uh, use five or six decimal places. What I want to do is I want to use the full capacity of your calculator. What I want you to do is I want you to store this value into your calculator. So depending on how you did it, most of you should be able to just go to your home screen and hit the store button and store it for a variable. But once you find this intersection, the y value, it doesn't really matter what the x value is, the y value at this intersection here is going to be um, whatever we got for a and you stored that in your calculator. Okay, so we got some x value is 1.2 something, I think you guys said, um, and then 1.793. Um, and what I'm gonna do instead of, instead of writing that number out, I'm just gonna put a as my upper limit. Now, like I said, I did something that's not really uh, the best practice, because I'm using a here as area and a here as my upper limit, or my upper y limit. Um, so I'm going to change this and just write area here to get around that. Because um, I don't want to use the same variable for two different things. So now what I can do is use the calculator to evaluate this integral. But when I enter the upper limit, I'm just going to put, I'm just going to type in alpha a. So when you type this in, um, either on the graph or uh, or on your home screen, you're going to do fn int and then enter the function. You guys know what that is. That's the integrand part there. You're integrating with respect to x if, if you enter it in terms of x. You can change these to x's as far as evaluating the integral. Or you can leave it as y's and then you would write a y here. And then you'd go from negative 1 to a. Type that in and see what you get. So what you can do here, and, and you can do this on my test, you can do this on the AP test, you just have to be clear about what you're doing. And, and this right here would be enough um, labeling in the picture that A is the Y value of this point. And then uh, I would know that you're using your calculator for that as your upper limit, um, and then you can just write that as the upper limit here and use that. Okay, I'm, I'm curious, did anybody, instead of using the, um, the A, tried, um, try the 1.793 and see what you get? Do that real quick. Instead of A, put 1.793. That would be accurate to three decimal places. And, and see if you get the same thing. <laughs> 